It sounds so cool when people use a neural network in every possible task they want to solve. But integrating these things into the problem domain is not easy and integrating them in reinforcement learning is even harder as there is no static dataset to learn from. That's why reinforcement learning was hidden under the blanket for years. But the wait is no more. We now have algorithms which integrate these networks seamlessly into reinforcement learning. Welcome to the fifth video of this reinforcement learning series where we will be studying and implementing an algorithm which changed the image of reinforcement learning in front of the world. Welcome to Campus X. Subscribe to keep following this series. Sit back, relax and learn. In the previous video, we studied algorithms which seemed to perform well in empirical settings, but problems quickly creeped up when the stage spaces got large. And the problem lied in the fact that our algorithms were learning online. Online learning is intuitive but has many problems which we identified in the end of the previous video. The algorithm which we will study alleviates some of these problems. Deep Q learning was introduced to solve the Atari 2600 games in 2013 and this algorithm figured out how can the agents learn to play these games just by taking the pixel values of the screen as input. In 2015, they published another revision of the paper which introduced some elements which stabilized learning even more. It did so with the introduction of a biologically motivated fact that we rethink our past decisions from time to time. We rethink our past experiences and try to figure out what else we could do in that situation that would probably make our life better. It introduced the use of a memory buffer which stores previous transitions. This buffer is often called a replay buffer or replay memory or experience replay. The algorithm states that when the agent has completed a transition, instead of learning from it, store the transition in the replay buffer. Then sample a batch of transitions randomly and perform a learning step. Let's see how this simple trick helps us alleviate all kinds of problems. The first problem it solves is the problem of high correlations. The online case learns directly from consecutive samples which is inefficient due to high correlations between the samples. When we randomly select transitions from our replay buffer, we break the correlations between samples. The second problem it solves is inefficient reuse. The online case throws out a transition after its update is done. But in this case, we store the transition in the buffer which has the potential of being reused multiple times to update the network, thereby increasing the efficiency of learning. Third, we sample a batch of random transitions from the replay buffer which is more efficient than a single sample in terms of updating the networks. Now when using such replay buffers, it is necessary to learn off policy. If we were learning on policy, the current parameters determine the next data sample that the parameters are trained on. The problem is this, if our maximization action is to move left, the training samples will be dominated by samples from the left hand side. But if the maximization action switches to right, the training samples will be dominated by samples from the right hand side. Therefore the parameters can get stuck in a local minima or even diverge catastrophically. That's why it is necessary to learn off policy which motivates the choice of Q-learning over SARS. Another element which was introduced in 2015 to stabilize learning was the target network. In total, there are two networks. We call the main network as the online network and the other one, the target network. The architecture of the target network is completely the same as the online network. Notice the online network is parameterized by theta and the target network is parameterized by theta minus. The reason it is called the target network is because we use this network to calculate the targets for updates. The target network is a slow copy of the online network and the weights of this network are replaced by the weights of the online network every C steps. Understand how this slow copy stabilizes learning. If we had just used the online network to generate the targets for updates, an increase in the values of the current states could have potentially increased the values of the next stage too. In the next update, the target would also be increased. The network will again chase this increased target. This leads to oscillations and possible divergence in learning. That's why we generate our targets from the target network because it is a slow copy of our online network. An update to the current states of our online network does not immediately update the values of our next states from our target network, thereby making it little stable. 
This is what keeps the learning in control and leads to better policies. One fun fact, this algorithm is commonly referred to as DQN but it is not the algorithm's name. DQN stands for Deep Q Network and is the name of the convolutional Q network used in this algorithm. The name of the algorithm is Deep Q Learning. We start by initializing our replay buffer, our online network and our target network. For each episode, we choose a starting state. For every step of the episode, we select an action according to Epsilon Greedy policy. We take that action and observe reward and next state. Then we store this transition in the replay buffer. Then we sample a mini batch of transitions from the replay buffer and calculate the targets for our updates. Note here the targets are generated from the target network. We then perform a gradient descent step by minimizing the MSE loss between the targets and our current values. After every C steps, we update the target network by replacing its weights by the weights of our online network. Let's not wait any longer and implement this algorithm and see the results for ourselves. So we are in our workspace. The first thing you'll notice that I am in the branch for this video, which is part five for the code for part four is in branch of part four. The next thing you'll notice is uh, SARS and Q-learning codes have been removed. I have only kept the evaluator code which loads up a Q-network and uh, displays what the agent is behaving. We will start by creating our Python script and I will name this DQN simple or uh, DQN cartful. DQN cartful seems like a good name. We'll start by importing Jim. We'll import TensorFlow as TF. And I'll do some imports later. One thing that I'll need right now to create our neural network is to import model input um, from layers, kras dot layers. Oops, kras dot layers. I'll need dense. Uh, we will start by creating our environment, which has the name of cartpool v1. Next, we will create our network. You have already seen, so I will just copy and paste. The next thing that I'm going to do is compile this network with an optimizer. This time, we are not using any alpha parameter, which is our uh, learning rate. We are using an optimizer called Adam. Next, I will initialize a loss function dot losses. I'll import mean squared error and I am not initializing here. I'm not compiling the network with the loss function. I will just have my loss function uh, separately. That's a choice I'm making. The next thing that we want to do is clone our target network. The target network's architecture and the weights initially will be the same as that of our online network which is represented by qnet so i'll use a function called clone model uh, and i will clone my q network i notice that i do not have clone model imported so from keras.models i'll import clone model so what this function does is clones the architecture and the weights of our q network into our target network that's our initial setting Next, we'll define some parameters. We'll start by epsilon and I'll start, I'll have an decaying epsilon uh, exploration strategy. So I'll start with one and I will have an epsilon decay of 1.005. Now, people do use uh, decays less than one and that's because uh, the reason we're using DK is more than one is because we're using this this formula to reduce our epsilon people sometimes use um, this formula they multiply it with something less than one which reduces the epsilon so it depends on what is your implementation my implementation is by equal to that's why I'm using a DK greater than one next I will have my gamma parameter 0.99 and this time I will train it for uh, 300 episodes. How do I know this number? I have experimented a little. 
before starting our training loop i will start by creating our policy function i'll have my epsilon parameter i'll select my optimal action i will pass the state to my queue network and get the first uh, element of the batch so what i said last time was that this state is batched it can be a batch of one state which has a tensor shape of 1 comma 4 but this led to batching the state just after we received it from uh, the environment this time i'm going to go for something different whenever we get the batch or get the state from the environment i'm just going to send it to the policy without batching it up so this will be effectively a vector of four elements and here i'm going to batch it up or convert it to a batch of only one state i can use this function expand um, expand times and i will say that i want to batch it up for axis zero it essentially does the same thing converts the tensor of four elements into a tensor of one comma four all right that's my expand dims uh, i'm passing it through q network now i have the action values for this current state i want to get the action which has the maximum q value so i'll use my argmax function and i will also mention my output type as in 32 as the default one is float th uh, float 32 now i would like to randomly select an action with explode uh, probability so the shape is an empty tuple which means that it will return me a float value and the max value of that float will be 1 and if that value uh, which is sampled uniformly randomly is less than equal to explode then with probability epsilon uh, or explode i am going to do something which is randomly select another action so random dot uniform and i'll just copy paste from my last video at last i will return my action so that's our policy this is the only change that we have done is that we are expanding the dimensions of the state here now we will begin our training loop for episode in range of num episodes initialize done to false I'll get my state env dot reset. Now we don't have to convert it to a tensor and all. We are just doing that thing in expand dims inside the policy. For every step of the episode, we will need to select our action from our policy function with our current epsilon. We take that action in the environment. We pass it numpy action dot numpy. We will observe our next states our reward whether the episode has finished or not and some bookkeeping information the next thing we need to do is insert this transition into the replay buffer we still don't have this function or the replay buffer we will we'll create that in just a second um, but what we do need to pass as a transition is the state the action taken the um, reward next state this was what was mentioned in the paper that uh, uh, we need a transition of these four parameters but i also need to save my done param done variable to indicate whether this next state is the terminal state or not if it is we would like our updates to be just the reward otherwise we will have to add gamma into the q values of the next state one last thing that we'll do is make our next state as our current state. Now we will move on to creating our replay buffer and inserting this transition, writing that function. Uh, so how would we create our replay buffer? We will have a list. This will store a list of transitions. That's our replay buffer. All right, let's write down our insert transition method and it will get a transition transition uh, remember this transition is a list of state action next state and um, reward and done what we will do is replay buffer dot append transition 
but you will right away notice that uh, we don't have any stopping condition for a deploy buffer it will continue to store the transitions infinitely we don't need that right because it will ultimately run out of memory so we need to have a limit on the amount of transitions that this deploy buffer can hold so we will define a parameter called max transitions and let's say we will store only 1 lakh uh, recently seen transitions and how do we make sure that we have 1 lakh is that if our deploy buffer if the length of our deploy buffer has already crossed max transitions we will pop out one element from the front of the buffer and we we are popping out one element from the front and we are appending another transition in the back that's how we maintain the max number of transitions in this deploy buffer now that we are here uh, we have written our insert transition the next thing we know that we have to do in the dqn uh, algorithm is to sample a batch of transitions so why don't we write a function for that right now transitions uh, and I'll have a parameter called batch size and I'll in, uh, initialize it to 16 or default value should be 16 uh, uh, so that I can change my batch size whenever I want I have a parameter the next thing that I'll do is um, samples a batch size of indices and then pick out those transitions one by one okay so uh, I will have random indices variable what it will do is randomly select some indices and if you don't pass any batch size it will randomly select 16 indices so i'll use my random function from tensorflow random uniform the shape will be batch size my minimum value of my index can be zero not can be it will be my maximum value will be length of the replay buffer and the d type will be tf.int32 because i want um, integer indices next i want what i will do for every batch i will store the current states in a simple uh, in a different list how do i get my current states so I will loop over my random indices and sample current states I will put I will get that uh, from the replay buffer so replay buffer index give, gives me the particular transition and at the 0th position there is the current state and I am storing the batch of current states in this list and what I will do is return return the sample current states sample current states or instead of sample let's write down sample uh, but I would like to do that only after converting it to a tensor and the reason is that tensors are fast uh, not only do we want to do it with current states I would like to have our actions our rewards next states and terminals to be batched up like this in a different list so this is what I have done uh, I have done the same thing as the current states defined a list for every other uh, that uh, and every other element of the transitions and I have done the same thing notice for the actions for every transition the action is at the 1th position the rewards are at the 2th and next states and terminals are 3 and 4 respectively and I have done the same thing of converting these lists to tensors before sending back first I am sending current states then sampled actions then rewards then next states and sample rewards so what effectively this is doing is giving me back batches of these uh, elements of transitions the next thing that we'll do in our algorithm is from the sample transitions we will sample some we will sample our current states our actions our rewards our next action values or next states actually next states and terminals terminals means whether the episode had finished on that transition or not and on the sample transitions uh, what I can do is pass in a batch size which I can modify from outside or uh, from here I want to have my fine control from here so that I can change my parameters whatever to whatever I want 
so i will initially have batch size of 64 okay the reason i had to do so much of a uh, task in sample transitions was will be very helpful now that you will see we don't have to write any for loops so now now that we have sampled the transitions from our replay buffer we need to calculate our targets to calculate the targets let's first find out our next action values the next action values will be t um, will be from our target network to the target network we will send back our next stage notice that these next states are batches so to uh, we will get back the a batch of action values so we need to select the optimal action value so we do tf dot reduce max at axis equal to one what it effectively does is whatever is the output of the target network for every sample it goes and takes out the maximum q value next we will need our targets we will create our targets from our next action values so we'll use a function called where actually before doing that let's do this our target should be rewards plus gamma into the next action values but we would like our targets to be just the rewards if uh, terminals was true right if uh, the transition was the last transition of the episode then we will write down a function called where to this where first I will pass terminals then I will pass rewards and the next part will be the same so what this where function does is for every value of the terminals if it is true the targets will be reward if it is false the target will be rewards plus gamma into action values so for every sample it does this condition checking and that's why we were able to so much uh, able to save so much code because we wanted to use this function and that's why we had to create these batches simple enough uh, we have our targets we need our current values so to the uh, q network on our online network we'll pass in our current states and we'll have our friends now this uh, the return for this is uh, a batch of action values and we need to select those actions or those q values for which action the policy was like which whichever action was taken for that action we need to get out the q values for every sample that's why i will write down this code uh, it's a little tricky to understand basically i'm creating those indices using those actions and i am gathering those q values for every sample okay now we will create our uh, we will calculate our loss using our loss function uh, loss fn uh, our loss will be msc loss between our targets and current values we also need to keep track of the gradient so we will start recording the operations on a gradient tape on a gradient tape as tape and I will put this within the context next we need to calculate our gradients and apply it to a Q network so tape dot gradient gradient of our loss with respect to the parameters of our neural network trainable weights this will return me a list of gradients so I will store it in grads next this time i will use my optimizer which is adam in this case and use a function called apply gradients or did i write the spelling correctly optimizer apply gradients yes i did and i will zip grads and qnet dot trainable weights t r a i yeah trainable weights so basically this time we are not applying any alpha parameter this time we are using the optimizer to apply our gradients. The next thing we will do is update our target network. Basically, we have to do is, what we have to do is target network dot set weights to be qnet dot get weights. I am copying the weights of the q network to the target network because the architectures are completely the same. But we don't want to do it in every step. We want to do it after a certain number of steps. 
to calculate the certain number of steps we need a step counter first so we'll initialize a variable called step counter and after every transition is complete or every step is complete we will increment our step counter after every c steps we would like to update our target network so we'll do step counter mod um, let's say after four steps after four steps we would like to uh, update our target network but i don't want to give a hard coded value i want to keep a parameter which i can tune or toggle or change every time so not learn after it will be update uh, or let's keep it target update after uh, i don't have these so i will go to top paste this and i will initialize it to four for the card pole example uh, one last thing that is not one last thing some things that are left are after every episode is complete we want to decay our epsilon epsilon by equal to epsilon decay and next we would like to close off our environment env dot close and save our queue network that's very important save our queue network using the name dqn qnet we would also like to keep some metrics we will write down our classical metrics total rewards episode length uh, at the end of the step i will add my rewards to my total rewards episode length and i will display my metrics and i'll copy paste from the previous video i would also like to okay total rewards will be and i would also like to keep exploration or epsilon maybe epsilon should be whatever the epsilon value is so i think that's about it let's uh, recap what you have done we start by creating our environment creating our model compile it with an optimizer i have my loss function i am target uh, sorry i am cloning my target model uh, from my online network i am creating some parameters i have my replay buffer and its necessary functions i have created a policy which is it's an ready policy for every episode i am resetting the environment uh, for every step i am Select an action according to our epsilon greedy policy. Taking that action, observing our next state reward and uh, whether the episode has finished or not, and inserting the transition into the replay buffer. Our making the next state to be the current state, incrementing the state counter, sampling a batch of transitions from our replay buffer, calculating the targets, calculating the gradients, applying the gradients, and every uh, C steps or target after steps. we are updating our target networks keeping some metrics displaying that uh, if silent decay is there and i'm saving my queue network so that ought to be everything all right let's right click and run dqn card pool all right we have our training results but before going to the training results i would like to mention one thing that i made a typo here instead of reward i wrote rewards and that rewards is actually the sampled uh, is sampled from the replay buffer that's not what we want we want to store the current reward so i will make reward and i did train it with that we have our training results and i got surprised uh, by this and the reason i'll say a little later uh the initially we have lengths of 16 and all and but as we go down our lengths has started increasing and they are fairly over 100 after 100 episodes and they are fairly over 200 over 200 episodes and at last um they have 400 300 episodes uh, 300 lengths uh, at the last uh, let's see how this uh, agent is behaving so we have our dq and q network here we will open up our evaluator uh, and see how our card pool agent is doing the first thing we'll change is the name of our q network and we will run this and uh, oh wait let me let me just change the wait here it will be 20 milliseconds so it will be a little fast 
all right so this is what our agent has learned and it's not bad it's not bad it's not bad it's not uh, able to keep the pole balanced properly it can just uh, yeah it jiggles at the end <laughs> but that's very interesting and funny too and the reason i was surprised is because um uh, when i trained at the last time it did not get trained and for you also it might not get trained the reason for this uncertainty is probably because of our reward function and okay we have seen enough so remember what the reward function for our cart pull problem was it was plus 1 for every step taken but that's not really defines the goal right what really defines our goal is whether the pole is balanced or not so for example if you have a state where your pole angular velocity is very high in that case that state is not really a good state right that's not balanced so it should probably have a lower value our current reward function does not help us do that so let's write down another reward function which uh, which properly defines our goal so let's write down this our goal is to keep the pole balanced so only if the pole angle is low and pole angular velocity is low we will give it positive rewards otherwise we will give it negative rewards so let's write down this function def calculate reward for a particular state what it will do is uh, for every step we will give it reward of minus 1 if the pole angle which is state 2 which is the 2th element of state if that pole angle is lesser than 4 degrees and if it is lesser than 4 degrees on either side and how do i know these numbers that this is 4 degrees is because i went to the uh, gym documentation and for this example and saw the lowest and highest values what it can be and figured out what will be the value for 4 degrees so if the pole angle is within 4 degrees and the pole angular velocity is within 15% of what can be the maximum then we will give it positive rewards and 15% of pole angular velocity is given by 0.525 and the pole angular velocity is state of 3 if it is uh, 15% on either side we will give it positive rewards 1.0 and we will return the reward so this is our new reward function let's go down and change this so we don't want the reward that's coming from our environment rather we want to calculate our own rewards from the current state um not from the current from the next state sorry so the reward is for the next state if it's terminal it will give me whatever plus 1 or minus 1 depending on whether the pole is balanced or not so this reward function clearly defines whether the pole is balanced or not i will also add a comment to it of whatever this reward function defines so if the pole angle is lesser than 4 degrees on either side and pole angular velocity is lower than 15% on either uh, either directions we will give it positive one reward so let's train it but let before training it i would like to install one more um package which is called pandas and you'll see in just a minute why we will need it okay after installing pandas i will run this file again dqn cart pull and watch what happens this time all right so we have our training results and let's see what happened the first thing that you will see that we start off randomly but as our training progressed um after 100 episodes it was well over 100 uh, the length of the episodes were well over 100 and uh, even after uh, i don't know I did see 400 somewhere, but uh, yeah, even after 173, the lengths were 400 and somewhere near to that 200 and all. And when I go to the end of the training, you'll see that there are 500 lengths of episodes uh, in 200 from 230 to 240, and this continued till the end of the uh, training. And so this tells me that the agent got trained, but we won't have surety until we see it for ourselves. so i'll go to my evaluator and run it again 
All right, so that you. Oh wow, wow, wow! <laughs> All right, it can jiggles a little bit here too. Uh, but it's keeping the pole stable. Last time it was going off the uh, side, but this time it is. Uh, so what it's doing is first introducing a right or left hand bend and then trying to keep the pole balanced. I don't have any idea why it's doing so. One thing that the 2015 paper mentions is to clip our MSC loss between minus one and one. This increases the stability of our algorithm. The simplest way to do that is to apply Huber loss that comes with KRS. Here is the difference between the MSC and Huber losses geometrically. And here are the equations for the two losses. Another metric that these people introduced apart from the total reward metric was to use average queue. Basically before starting training we sample a certain number of states using a random policy and after every episode we calculate the queue values for these states and keep track of them. This does not really tell us what is the progress of learning but it kind of gives us a sneak peek into our agent and a prediction of its values. Using this metric, we'll immediately know if our networks are diverging and then we can immediately stop training without wasting valuable time. So let's apply these two changes. The first thing I'll do is change my mean squared error to Huber loss. This will be Huber and this will be Huber. So our loss function is now Huber. Let's apply our average Q metric now. Uh, where should we do it? Just before starting training. Just before starting training. Uh, let's have a list which will store our uh, initial states following uh, a random policy, right? That's what the metric tells us that before starting training, we have to sample uh, some initial states using following a, a random policy. So let's say I will just sample 20 initial steps. So the first thing that we'll do is, okay random states dot append i will append my current state to the random states list and my i is not defined so i equal to zero and uh, then we will take an action randomly so env dot step we'll use our policy function pass in the state uh, dot numpy note that we are not passing an epsilon here because we are doing this before our uh, starting uh, before our training starts so the policy will be uh, exploratory anyways from this step we get our uh, okay, from we our states our uh, reward which we can ignore our done and bookkeeping information then i plus equal to one at last one more thing that i'll do is uh, convert this random states list to a tensor because tensors are fast if you are using hardware acceleration random states now random states is a tensor of states which are sampled according uh, sample following a exploratory policy now now i would also like to write a function get q values for a certain random states and i will return the reduce max of whatever the q action values are for these states x is equal to 1 now after every every episode is complete i would like to find out this random or average q values average q values of these random states tf dot reduce mean uh, i'll use my get q values function and pass in my random states and whatever is being returned, I will convert it to an integer using our numpy method and I will also print it out. Let's say average Q is the name and abgq. And to be honest, I am very tired of seeing my metrics on the console. So let's do one thing. Um, Let's save my metrics in a file and then write down some other script which loads this matrix file and displays live plots. Okay, so we'll start by doing this. We will initialize we will initialize a dictionary just before training, which will 
have episode length total reward average queue and exploration as their um, keys and the values will be first of all empty list now we will uh, for every episode we will fill these lists and the metrics so what we will do is instead of printing this out um, i will do this so metric episode append uh, i am appending uh, episode then length i am appending um, le episode length for total reward i will append total rewards and for average queue instead of this i already have calculated this no point in calculating that again so avgq which is this so after every episode i am calculating the mean q values of these random states and this is my excel and i would also like to save this metric but i don't want to do a pickle dump okay uh, what i can do is convert it to a pandas data frame this is actually uh, a dictionary so i can convert it to a pandas data frame and it gives us a handy function which lets us store the data frame in a csv file let me show you what i mean so i'll do pd dot data frame i will have my metric so this converts the metric dictionary into a data frame and i'll use the two csv function to store that metric i'll name the file metric dot csv now I'll also pass a index equal to false uh, I do not know if I have imported PD. Let's go upstairs and it has imported PD. If you did not import PD, uh, just import pandas as PD. Okay, those are the uh, two or three updates. One last update that I'll do is you will notice that our training process is very slow. If we could wait for two or three steps before updating these we were sampling and updating our networks it would be beneficial so what i will do is let's say we will update or apply our updates after three or four transitions are complete so i'll do this if step counter mod four is equal to equal to zero for, for every four steps i will do my updates instead of a hard-coded value I will go for something else, learn after steps, uh, a parameter which I can tweak and change. So I have to define the value for this parameter. So learn after steps. Let's keep it four for this uh, card fold problem. And I think that's basically it. The new things that we have done here is uh, added our Hoover loss, added our uh, random states and our average queue metric we are uh, creating a metric dictionary and storing the values there and every uh, after every episode we are storing that metric in a csv file and let's train it again you will notice that once our training starts you will have a metric.csv file i want to write another file uh, which takes reads that metric.csv and plots live graphs so we will start by creating a python file called plotter okay and i already have the code written i will just give you a walkthrough because it is a complex matplotlib code so the first thing it does is creates four figures and i have my path to my metric file on a different thread it reads our metric file and stores it in a shared variable and then we use that shared variable to for uh, to plot four plots and you will see what those plots are and those plots get updated every 10 seconds so i'll run my plotter file um, no module named matplotlib okay sorry my mistake i will go and install matplotlib matplotlib so after installing matplotlib if we run the plotter then four plots come up we'll see what those four plots are it reads the metric.csv and four plots come up and these are your four plots the thing i'd like to do is i like to tile them on my screen and basically yeah. so this is how i tile them so what we have is first of all reward per episode it tells you how much rewards it collected on a particular episode the next one is length of the episode this is actually figure 3 uh, the length of the episode 
uh, what is the average Q metric and our exploration, which is decaying. Now, you will see that our Q values are kind of diverging. Um, I do not know what the problem is. Let me figure out what the problem is and I'll be back. All right, I found out the problem is that the target update after is four. And this is not the uh, ideal value for our uh, target update. Uh, we at least want a thousand uh, steps before we update our target. So we will stop our both of our files. Uh, we want at least a thousand steps before we update our target network. I think that's why it was diverging a little bit. So I'll delete my metric.csv and rerun my cartpole trainer. And in the DQN paper, they normally keep this number as 10,000, but I'm keeping thousand because this uh, environment is so small. So uh, it has not created the metric.csv yet, but I can still run my plotter. We have our four plots, I will tile them up. And yeah, now it's fine. Now remember that for every step we were giving minus one rewards. So our average queue uh, is going down. Now, ideally what we would like to see is for the total reward to go up to 500 and the length of the episode to go up to 500. Exploration will decay continuously and average queue will decay initially. But once it starts learning, the average queue should go up. That's what we want. Let's wait and watch what happens. All right, so it turns out that I was suffering from divergence issues with the Hooper loss and the uh, reward function that I had already. Uh, so I had to do some modifications and I had, I tried out different hyperparameters and all. So after making these changes, I was able to train my engine. So I kept my loss as Hooper. I reduced my network parameters from you remember this was 62 I've reduced it to 32 and uh, this is 16 from 32 so 32 and 16 is, I have increased my number of episodes to 400 I have decreased my learn after steps to 3 uh, and for the uh, calculate reward function I have made my goal state more specific so earlier I had constraints on only pole angle and pole angular velocity now I have added constraints on pole or uh, sorry cart position and cart velocity. So cart position has to be between 0.5 in either sides of the uh, middle of the screen and the cart velocity should be uh, within one in either direction. So these are the two things that I have added. So I'm really defining my goals, uh, my goal state that is my pole should be balanced. It should not be moving. The angular velocity should not be so much my angle should be very less so i'm really defining my goal here uh, so these were the parameters that i trained on and these were the network uh, this is the network architecture and ultimately the training parametrics turned out to be this i'll start off with the length of the episode so you can see that uh, it slowly has uh, rising to about 500 in about 225 episodes. I don't know if you will be able to reproduce these results, but um, after 300 episodes, it just came down a little bit and then went up. Then after uh, after 350 episodes, all the episodes had uh, 500 lengths. For the reward, it came down a little bit. After that, it went up. The average Q value started going up after 200 and probably if I would have trained more, it would have gone up more. The exploration has uh, decayed exponentially, which is kind of deterministic. So let's see how this agent is doing. Uh, I'll go to my evaluator. My network's name is same and I will run this evaluator. All right, so we have our results. Okay, nice. It is taking a left and right action and keeping the pole stable. It is kind of diverting away from the center a bit but it's doing a good job it's doing a good job this is the second episode and yeah it kind of keeps the pole balanced not kind of it is keeping it balanced and probably doing better than me 
Let's train another problem which is considered a hard reinforcement learning problem. The problem is very simple. We have to climb the mountain and reach the goal at the top of the mountain. The actions are accelerate to the left, accelerate to the right and do nothing. But the main problem is you won't be able to take all right actions and reach the top of the mountain. To reach the top of the mountain, we have to use gravity to fight against it. The ideal policy is to oscillate back and forth and when the velocity is high enough, we will reach the top of the mountain. The reason it is called a hard reinforcement learning problem is because of our reward function. Our rewards are minus 1 for every step, except when we have passed the goal to the top of the mountain, we give 0 rewards. Let's visit the gym documentation to see how this environment is implemented there. Alright, so we have our mountain car uh, environment here. It is in classic control and mountain car. The action space are three discrete integers. The observation shape is two. That means there are two elements uh, in the observation. And you can import this environment by uh, gym.make. The name is mountain car v0. The observation shape is uh, two, it contains two elements. The first one is the position of the car along the y axis. So basically what is the position of the car along the, sorry, x axis, not y axis. And what is the velocity of the car? Action space are three different actions, accelerate to the left, one is don't accelerate, two is accelerate to the right. They do mention that the position is clipped in the range between minus 1.2 to 0 0.6 and the velocity is clipped uh, in the range minus 0 0.07 to 0 0.07 okay the reward is minus 1 for each time step uh, the starting state the agent starts at any point between 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 minus 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 so Basically, this is minus 0 0.6 and 0 0.4, this is minus 1.2 and this is, I guess, 0 0.5. The goal is at 0 0.5. The episode terminates if any of the two things happen. Either the car has reached the goal, which is at position 0 0.5, or the episode length is 200. So we give it 200 steps to reach the goal, otherwise the episode terminates. So let's implement this and we will see how less changes it takes to uh, convert our DQN algorithm from cart pull environment to mountain car environment. So let's see that. So we are in our pie chart. The first thing that I'll do is I'll copy everything from DQN. Oh, sorry. From DQN cart pull, I'll copy everything. I will make another function, uh, another uh, script called DQN mountain car. What's that DQN? No, I made the D, uh, D E N mountain card. So I will refactor it, rename it to DQN mountain card. And I will paste everything here. Now let's change this environment to mountain card. So the first thing that I'll do is change the name of the environment to mountain, mountain car B0. The next thing, the observation or the input is of two element vector. I will keep my network uh, 64, 32 and my action space uh, contains three actions. I'll keep everything the same. This time I'm going to go for 1500 episodes and learn after steps three. The next thing we need to change is that we don't need this reward function as we will be using the rewards that our environments give us. So I don't have this reward function. I will catch the reward that my environment gives me. The next thing I'm going to do is change the name of my metric file. So mountain metric. So basically the previous metric, the cardboard metric, I want to save that for you people to see and the DQN. I will name the QNet, uh, sorry, the QNet name, uh, in network's name should be DQN Mountain QNet. And that is all. Everything we have done within two seconds, kind of. And I will train this example and let's see what happens. I'll train this and I'll also go to my plotter. 
I will change my metric uh, path. It will be mountain metric C, uh, CSV, and I'll start the plotter two, so that we have four plots that comes up. All right, our training is complete, and there is one thing that I missed out uh, before starting training was to make the random action selection from zero to three or zero to two. Uh, I forgot to change the random action selection, so I seem to do something. I seem to miss out something every time before starting training. So the training results are these. First of all, uh, the length of the episodes. Uh, for the first 210 uh, episodes, the agent kept trying uh, all the steps uh, to reach the top of the goal. But ultimately, at 200, I don't know, 10 or 20, it was able to reach the goal for the first time. And after 600 episodes, the agent reached the goal fairly well. And at the end of the episode, also, uh, sorry, end of the training, also, it was reaching it fairly well. You can see here. Uh, the rewards are ex as expected. The average queue went down, and after a thousand episodes, it started coming up, and the exploration nearly dropped to zero uh, when the training finished. So let's see how our agent behaves, and we will use the same evaluator uh, script. I'll just modify it. Um, I'll switch the environments. Mountain car V zero. Our DQN is mountain QNet. and our we have three actions i will rename this i am show to mountain car and that's basically it let's run this and see how our agent behaves all right wow that's a good policy nice nice so it's fighting gravity to yeah reach the top of the mountain yep it starts right and for some reason for one episode i guess it is getting stuck yep for the last episode it got stuck there so there is room for an uh, improvement surely our next target is to solve the lunar lander problem you probably remember this environment from the first video of this series I would like you to think about how should we design the reward function for this task so that the agent learns to land the vehicle properly. Think about this and I'll see you in the next one.